Hello, I'm Gary Wish On. I'm doing this video to get outside of my comfort zone. I really was impressed with the religious debates on YouTube. An exchange of ideas is something we should all be running towards and never from. Plus, anything that keeps the religious zealots of the world in check, more power to you. Now, how way I see it is people fall into one of three categories. Religious zealot, atheist, or spiritual minded person. Now, which category you fall into is dependent upon how you respond to the following statement. Your religious text did not fall out of the sky. 6,000 years ago, God did not hand a book over to anyone and say, here, read this. There'll be tests later. Now, if you found yourself screaming, did so, or wanting to scream, did so, you're a religious zealot and not very smart. If you found yourself laughing, you're probably an atheist. If you found yourself saying, yeah, I know that much, you're like me, spiritual minded. I still believe there's a God, but I don't, I'd sooner have my tongue ripped off before I try to jam my thoughts or beliefs onto someone else. It is so fucking rude for them, for the zealots of the world to do that. It's to the zealots I want to talk first. You're like a gambler who's doubling down. You're... It's the dogma that drives people crazy. See, I said a prayer years ago. I said to God, whoever he, she, it is, I'm going to try to be the best human being I possibly could for the sake of my sanity and hopefully for your pleasure. And I never looked back. Now, how I see how I see God or what you look for is evidence of him. I do it in music and art and complexity of the universe. Hey Jude by the Beatles. Who wants to live forever by a queen? Someone to love. They all sound like hymns to me, and if you don't like it, I don't care. You serve no purpose. And that's what's making you double down on the dogma, isn't it? You trying to grab desperately into power, and that scares the shit out of me. This charge into politics. I mean, it all came clear to me when Todd Akin said his now infamous story about legitimate rape. He was so desperately trying to kiss the religious zealots' ass just to keep his job and possibly trade up to a bigger one later. He knows who's ass to kiss. And if you were allowed free reign, you would tear down the wall between church and state and turn this country into a theocracy. And that should scare you just as much as it scares me. Because, oh, boo, fucking who, someone's making fun of you, oh, no, I'm being tormented. Someone's picking on me because I'm, I'm a religious, religious. Your problem 
in a theocracy is not because somebody's making fun of you. Your problem soon becomes, oh no, I'm about to be publicly flogged because I'm not seemingly religious enough. It's, there's never been one theocracy ever in the history of man who did not scream praise God and crush human rights at the same time. And I know that's what you people want to do deep down inside. And you think, God will love us now. God would, God would protect us now. If we just hold on so tightly to this dogma, you really don't have a clue about God, do you? We're here to evolve spiritually. Dogma is like trying to keep to our recipe and you think everything's going to come out fine at the end. It's not. Dogma is blinders. Dogma hides the truth. Asking questions is the only... Exploring new ideas is the only way we grow. And I will fight to the end to keep people... To give people the right and the chance to grow spiritually intellectually, emotionally. Now, to the atheists, fucking love you guys. I love the debates, the exchange of ideas. Wonderful. Cult of Dusty, Jacqueline Glenn, Mr. Repsion. I subscribe to all of you. Keep up the good work. But you gotta understand that the reason why 85, 80% of this country says they're Christian, it's like I said, spiritual minded people. We are the bulk. We're raised up in certain, belie certain belief systems and we proceed from there. I'm sure a lot of the people questioned probably just said Christian because it's the reaction they normally give. They probably go to church for you know the camaraderie to learn about God, try to get some idea about God, you know, the love of Jesus. And when they hear about the religious zealots scream about the uh, homosexuality being an abomination, they think to themselves, oh no, here we go again. When are we going to get past the crazy and back to the Bible we love? Or at least the parts we know of and we love. What they don't understand is they're never going to get past the crazy. The crazy is a kidney stone about the size of a baseball in the intestine of the body of the church. And until something is done to remove it, there will be no growth. There will be no change. There will be no good. And anything that atheists do to point that out, you're really helping us. Now, to the spiritual minded, never stop asking questions. It's the only self-defense we have. I know it gets so hard sometimes, and you need to connect, you feel it, a need to connect to something greater than yourself. And when you stop asking questions and you just follow follow somebody else and you're in a mindless lockstep, that's the worst thing you could possibly do. There's so many charlatans out there 
was willing to take your money, take, you know, any authority they can, you know, and run to Washington with it to buy power. You find yourself counted amongst them. You find yourself backing something completely horrifying. Never stop asking questions. There's this one example I can tell you about Charlatan that came to my mom's house when I was watching my nephew when he was a toddler. My mom went off to a doctor's appointment and this supposed Baptist minister came up to me and said that he opened up a new church and he was handing out flyers to come see, come see him speak. And I said, oh, that's good. Uh, my mom's looking for a new church. She's having trouble going to her old one. She's Baptist. And they, he asked me, what was I? And I kind of cringed. I said, well, if I have to be considered anything, I consider myself Buddhist, really. He grabs my hand and screams, say a prayer to Jesus with me. Say a prayer to Jesus with me. I said, get back the fuck off. All right, you want to get into this? Okay, let's get into this. The main reason why I don't consider myself Christian, one of the main reasons, is only one denomination of Christianity has ever admitted that the Jews did not kill Christ. It was the Catholics, and at that time they only said it once, and they never repeated themselves. And when he said, oh, the Jews did kill Christ, I said, oh, fuck, here we go. Make a long story short, we went back and forth, argued, argued, argued. I'm shooting him down left and right. Finally, I said, well, one of the main reasons why the Jews did not accept Christ is in the Torah, it says Christ will come once, not twice, not three times. And when he does, the swords would be beaten into plowshares and the land would be filled with milk and honey. And his eyes grows wide, and he goes, really? I said, uh, yeah, didn't you study comparative theology in seminary? He finally found, found enough humility to be embarrassed. His face turned red, and he goes, oh, you'd give this pamphlet to your mom? I said, sure, no problem. When my mom... I was more of a Baptist minister than this son of a bitch. You gotta be careful with these people. Finally, when, my, when I told my mom the story, she looked at me and said, Well, if you kicked his ass, what good is he gonna do me? Never stop asking questions. It's the only self-defense we have. I'll spare you the Kool-Aid analogy. Let's just say, when you stop asking questions, it's like, getting sex from a crack whore. You can think Angelia Jolie all you fucking like, but when you open your eyes, it's still a crack whore. She's running down the street with your wallet now, and the only thing you have left is the STD she just gave you. Think for yourself. Please. Thank you, and I hope I furthered the debate.